So, Sukihotu to all the brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. <clears throat> and uh, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to wherever you are. <clears throat> uh, today's talk, I was thinking of, uh, you know, to bring about those, those things uh, that we practice during the meditation and try to translate it out or try to pull some of the principles out into our times that we are in the when we are in the difficult times yeah. <clears throat> so it is important that uh, we able to bring ourselves or out from our difficulty, at least mentally. Yeah. So a number of things for today, I'm going to share uh, regarding from the Vipassana perspective, and then we bring it out to our everyday life. Of course, within a talk, we cannot able to cover everything. Yeah. Then also, also, this one also will be involved those people who are, you know, if you have some degree of practice, then this talk will be in a way kind of like you can able to you can able to put it into application. But those who have not started with vipassana, then perhaps this talk may may give you the encouragement, give you the inspiration that perhaps in the future you may able to start this vipassana and hopefully be able to develop and progress further in this path of the dhamma hmm. now you see vipassana is practice uh, there's only one goal for vipassana and the goal is to finally get out of this cycle of birth and rebirth Get out of this samsara, eh? where all this COVID doesn't touch you, <laughs> all this difficulty don't touch you anymore, eh? because here the whole mind and body is extinguished, eh? and it is important for us to understand that particular goal, because if you don't understand that particular goal or that main goal then when you are more interested in all the secondary goals then you'll be a problematic yeah? then you won't go very far actually <laughs> because when you are contented with all the secondary things then then the, you, you will not go far yeah? now but the, the thing is that Today, I'm not going to talk about Nibbana. I'm not going to talk about all these things. I'm going to talk about the secondary goals. <laughs> I'm going to talk about those things. Because while we are living here, we need, we need something. We need something for, to, 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 to uplift ourselves. To make ourselves progress or at least go through the difficult times, the troubled times. Yeah. So, so here I'm looking at the secondary goals. But nevertheless, I would like to remind you that the whole goal of Vipassana is the main goal where we get out of this cycle of birth and rebirth. Yeah. So these secondary, secondary goals help us to elevate our all our and not all but some of our problems in our lives uh, the problem is sometimes when we talk about vipassana here when devotees doesn't understand the principle of this vipassana and the goal of this vipassana uh, then they will take this secondary goal as the main goal. 
and not only that, not only that, when they take this as a main goal, then they will project it to others or they share it to others. And others also have that, have that same uh, idea, same mindset. And then you'll be sort of like, you'll be deteriorating or you will dilute actually the whole Dhamma is taught by the Buddha. Yeah. So it's good that we understand the principle here, or that understand the goal here. Yeah. Now, training of vipassana is not an easy training. Uh, some teachers even say that the training of the vipassana is, is the most difficult training in, in all the, the techniques of Buddhism, in all the things that you do in Buddhism. Uh, uh, dana or sila or this or that nah? this is vipassana is the most difficult and it's true because here we need to tame the mind nah? we need to tame the mind we need to progress the mind we need to abandon the defilements it is difficult which is very true nah? Nah. Yes. so but nevertheless there are people there are devotees uh, who are keen enough, and also there are monks and nuns who are keen enough to pursue on this path. They will, they will take up the challenge. Uh, they will take up the challenge. And this challenge is not something like you do it, well, one retreat or two retreat. It takes a lifetime. It takes a lifetime. And it, again, it depends on how much you want to put your time into it. The more you put your time into it, uh, the better it, it, it becomes, generally. Lah. But in the meantime, you will struggle. In the meantime, you have to go through all the struggling. And it's a, it's a difficult path. It's, it's difficult. Yeah. Even I've practiced for so many years, and I still find it that it is difficult. And I've seen, seen, see, I still see that uh, devotees are struggling with it. Monks are struggling with it. Nuns are struggling with it. Uh, so, so let's see. Now, during the times that we train in Vipassana, uh, there are many things that you have to be, you, you have to be ready, mentally ready, physically also have to be ready. Uh, uh, say for example, when you are physically ready, what I mean is that you must be healthy. You have a sound mind. You know, mentally healthy, physically healthy, at least you must have that. If you are physically weak, you will not be able to do this, all this mental development. Uh, now, so when you come and train, and you, so, so you have that criteria, and you have that faith, of course, you know, if you must have that faith, that confidence in the Dhamma, in the teachings, in the practice, in the Noble Eightfold Path, actually, then you put it into practice. Now, when you put it into practice, along the way, I know you'll be taught the instruction how to pay attention to your meditation objects, uh, like your in-breath, out-breath, your rising, falling, your pain, your walking meditation. What are the objects that you need to pay attention to? Uh, uh, then also the long hours, the long hours of training that we train from like 4 o'clock in the morning, the moment, the moment that you wake up, until like 10 o'clock in the evening. 18 hours per day, six hours for you to sleep. This is how much uh, a yogi, a meditator has to train when they're going into an intensive retreat. So some of us may think that, wow, this is so difficult. Huh? But this is the challenge. Yeah. Yeah. Now, while we are meditating, you know, we, we try to develop this meditation, then 
then you you you'll be bombarded with all kinds of hindrances, all kinds of defilements to block you from get, going through. And then here again, we also train ourselves to overcome them step by step. Sometimes we fail, sometimes we get we get caught into it, sometimes we can pull it out, and then we keep on pushing and not giving up until until the you know the time over for the retreat. Then after that, we plan for the next retreat to come back again and to keep on pushing and keep on going. Now, in the meantime, while you are doing all these things, uh, yeah, if you do not know how much you progress, you do not know where you are, in fact, in your meditation also. Uh, uh, it's, it's like a kind of like, a, you're going through a, like you go through a big jungle, uh, then once you enter into the jungle, and then the whole, the canopy and the trees, and they all looks the same. Nothing have like a special uh, signature or special um, landmark for you to take notice. Uh, so, vipassana is something like that. You go into 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 it, and then you really do not know. But while you are inside there, in the background. There's a lot of transformation taking place. Yeah. There's a lot of transformation taking place, although in the front you are struggling, you are going through all this difficulty. Yeah. And that transformation, it's so important because that transformation, if you know how to pull it out, put it into your everyday life, then it be, it's wonderful. Yeah. It's wonderful. Even before you touch Nibbana, uh, even you touch the getting out of this cycle of birth and rebirth. Okay? Now let's see a few examples. Huh? Let's see a few things that what in the Vipassana will do. Yeah. Now one of the things that, uh, one of the main struggling, struggle of Vipassana is this pain. Uh, is these unpleasant feelings. The physical feeling, mental feelings, yeah. and and usually in the beginning part, the yogi has both of this. Yeah. But if you're more you train, the meditator only have one, in the physical feeling, but not the mental unpleasant feeling. Yeah. But the transformation from even in the practice of vipassana is so much already. Uh, what more you want to take this vipassana out into the everyday life? Okay. Now here you see the meditator. Uh, the meditator is that when they are struggling with all kinds of pain, sometimes they're struggling every time they sit down, the pain arises. And they begin to have fear about meditation or even the sitting. They, they, they worried whether this pain is going to um, hurt the body or is going to injure the body sometimes. Yeah. Or they're going to have a permanent injury that is not going to be able to undo anymore. So the fear is there. And we, we understand that, you know, because some, yogi, some meditators, some yogis, they go through all these type of things. So, the yogi are thought, you know, in the beginning is, is the vipassana is that the yogi is thought to be courageous to put your mind just to pay attention to the pain and notice how the pain or what sorry, not what type of pain is there. That means it helps you to, to become more acceptance of the pain. Yeah? But in the beginning, you struggle. You struggle. You only what the mind is there, then you want to run away. You want to get out of it. Uh, but the instruction is that you have to see things as they are. Uh, so you got to put your attention to the pain. Uh, once you put your attention to the pain, you try to notice the pain. What type of pain is there? Is it a hard pain? Is it a soft pain? Is it a pulling pain? And so on. You know? uh, without, without. Um, uh, trying to to you know suppress the pain and so on. Yeah? 
but you have to see the pain as they are. Then when you see the pain as they are, then another thing is that you have to see how the pain is changing, whether it's getting more, it's getting less, and so on. And sometimes it changes from one place to another place. Now, if you have gone through a meditation retreat, you know, especially the Vipassana retreat, then you will, perhaps you have seen these things. And these things is where it slowly, slowly, it transforms you. In the background, you don't see it, but in the foreground, in the front, what you will notice is that you can able to withstand the pain for a longer period of time. Yeah? Before the anger comes in. Yeah? Before the aversion, the dislike, the hate comes in. Yeah? Then you will see that uh, your, your, with this training and you go through for some time, you see that your mind can able to stretch. Your, your meditation can stretch for a longer period of time before you snap. Which is already good, you know, because in the beginning your time is just maybe one minute. But this time you can able to stretch longer, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 15 minutes, one hour. And it is good. And this is wonderful. And you do not know how much transformation is inside there is already changing. Yeah? Because that, first of all, during in the meditation is that in the beginning part, when you notice the pain, the anger, the, the, the anger and the desire want to change the position, want to do this and that is so strong so strong your mind is not tame it, it wants to do other things rather than staying peaceful and quiet although in the midst of pain uh, then with the more the training that you have the mind can able to stay with the pain for a longer period of time now that is where the first transformation a very clear transformation is taking place uh, this is where when you bring it out to your everyday life. When you bring it out to your everyday life, this is where you can able to have more resilience, yeah? more resilience, more staying power when you are going through a troubled times, like right now in a COVID time. Mm. A COVID time is already not too bad already. Uh, but if we are going to, into a war, uh, you don't even have a shelter for you to stay at home or work at home. Uh. That time you have to run. You may not even look for food. <laughs> I mean, you might not able to have food on the table because you may not even have a table. Uh, you have to run. You have to pack your bags and run. Uh, you may not have a home to go back to. You'll be seeing, seeing more, more this one than what we have right now. Uh, although right now for a lot of people, there's a lot of fear and a lot of worry and a lot of uh, um, you know, uh, financial worry. You have a family, you have uh, children, you have, uh, you have uh, you know, your career maybe affected. You know? uh, so all these things, uh, we are going through a difficult times. But sometimes also, not only that, we go through our loved ones pass away, due to, perhaps due to COVID, or due to sickness, due to cancer, or due to old age, friends or family members. Yeah, yeah? We go through a lot of these troubled times while we are still alive. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where the training of Vipassana becomes so much more, so important at, at this juncture. You see, when a yogi trains together with all this, with the unpleasant feelings, huh, then it develops that mindfulness, it develops that patience and that resilience huh, towards the pain. And pain is unpleasant feelings. So when you bring it out to their everyday life, you know, in short, huh, 
the mind can able to withstand the difficulty of the everything uh, of the whole situation that you are in before you go into all kinds of fear and panic and uh, uh, worry and regret and so on. Uh, you, you can have that resiliency. Uh, and that resiliency is so important because for some people if that we know, even that I know of, you know, that because of the mind is so, sort of weaker, uh, when this difficult times coming in the mind doesn't have that buffering power you know it you know it doesn't have that resilient it cannot able to tahan you know, that the that before that the mind will quickly goes into anxiety you came to a lot of fear a lot of unstability emotional problems like right now, just like for some of you want to go out into buying things. Now, fortunately for me, I don't have to do all these things. You know, for for you it's different. You you have to go out and buy things, and and you do not know that outside there, who next to you, whether they have a they are carrier, they have COVID, they have a, they have this or that. You know? You do not know that whether there's a police block or whether you're afraid or whether the police will come in and check to this type of fear, panic and so on, you know. And not only that, sometimes sometimes like like you all uh, you have all kinds of chat group and people send every every kind of news to you. And you can't even know which one is real news, which one is fake news. You keep on reading everything and then and then you get so work up your whole mind is so worked up and then you become a lot of fear a lot of your, your mind is stretching at this moment of time so that's why you become a lot of the mind so unsettled you know uh, some people like you want to stay at home you know? or you want to meditate <laughs> but you be thinking of whether you have enough food or not and go out how where should I go? This place closed. What time should I go? What time should I come back? You know, all this type of worry and so on that you have to go through. And we can understand that. You know? So the mind is not settled. But then, whether you can able to have that resilient power so that your mind go, don't go into more and more anxiety. And, and that resilient of course is also come with that mindfulness yeah it comes with that mindfulness in in the sense that your mind able to detect that the anxiety is arising is this you know that that overthinking is arising that's you not know, in sometimes in the chest there's a tension uh, in the shoulders the, the whole tension is coming up due to all this uh, all this worrying and and so, things like this. Uh, then, then with the mindfulness is there. And with the mindfulness is there and the previous training that you gone through in the Vipassana, uh, then that mind has that resilient power. That means it can able to stretch for a longer period of time before you go into all these type of things. And it's usually, usually, yeah, what if you can have that long period of time, usually from somewhere in the middle, you already go out already, you know, out of this and you do, your mind is already out of it. So if you have a very short fuse on here, then a little bit, then you go into it. A little bit of fake news, a little bit of do not know what news, I, but if you think you're right, you already go into anxiety. Yeah. So, all these things is happening right now. You know? What more if we are in a more difficult times? Huh? Uh, uh, uh. So, so therefore, therefore, the training of this, this vipassana, when it comes to especially when the unpleasant feelings, huh, then it helps you to go through whatever unpleasant situation that you are in. Even though when you go through a death, also the same thing. Even in death, 
even in not your not your death but your loved one pass away and there you can able to have that mind uh, that can able to settle in the middle you know you're not in the sense that you are not happy you know maybe somebody you don't like one i can't say lah, eh? but your loved ones maybe you love the, the one that you love then the more 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 often than not our mind goes into sadness into regret into a lot of lamentation and that is actually is not very good because it that one's connected with unwholesome state of mind uh, uh, then here with the training of this pain also uh, in the vipassana then it brings you right to the middle you you have that the mind is more staying in the middle in the balance in the center that your mind can can able to accept death better just like you can able to accept the pain as you go with the training better over time you know? uh, so so the same thing uh, we, when it comes to this uh, death the mind can able to settle able to accept you know you feel the loss you don't not, not to say you don't feel the loss you feel the person is not there yes but your mind is not goes into all kinds of wrong thinking and so on you know? because i've seen uh, people who are very attached to their partner or to their certain things you know over time we see that their mind is always going back to the past that when they are together when they are or even their dogs also the same thing you know? and the dog pass away also cry and buckets of tears uh, you see here you, we don't realize that now a lot of us we don't realize that when we fall into all this type of state of mind we're going to we're going to a lot of a lot of unwholesome mental states and then the whole mind uh, is always fluctuate now uh. now since we are still a putujana or most of us are still a putujana you know maybe one or two maybe who knows enlightened but if you are still a worldling a putujana doesn't mean that there's no no sadness you know there's no worry or no restless mind or so and so on you, know? you still have but even then when you go inside there you only stay for a lot shorter period of time then only you already goes up of it and then your mind goes into middle or goes into joy you know in that sense uh, so so the thing is that now when the training of this pain uh, that it helps in the everyday life that even when you come into anxiety you come in a very short time and you know how to pick yourself out and not only short time but it doesn't go deep now it goes somewhere a little bit and then the mind knows how to climb out from it already from the pit uh, here for those people who have not trained uh, a lot of times when your mind goes into all these things you will just like keep on sliding down and down and further and further and further and then sometimes it's difficult to overcome those things uh, uh, but of course you know here like bgf also they have this emotional support they have this uh, like other places also they have befrienders and so on uh, they help you to cope with this type of the situation you know? but if you have the qualities that you develop from your meditation uh, you don't have to go through all of those strong suffering you go through a little bit of suffering but you can able to pull yourself out that's why it's important that we understand the development of this vipassana uh, and it's very helpful yeah uh, you have not to say you have no suffering but you have less suffering compared to before yeah compared to the past and that is so important yeah. that that we see for myself and also i've seen many many yogis they've gone through this development 
after some time. Nah. But don't, again, as I said, don't expect that. Just one or two meditation that you've gone through, uh, then you expect everything is well and good, you know. It takes time. Uh. The problem is right now, nah, there are also teachers uh, who completely say the opposite of what I'm talking about. Monks or nuns also, you know, they spoke there. Nowadays they say that, why you go meditate? Uh, no, no, no. Sorry, sorry. Go meditate is very good. But why are we going to see all this pain? Uh, life is full of pain already. What for you want to go inside there? Why so stupid? Uh, why so foolish to go inside all this pain? Go to the meditation and enjoy. You know, go and rest, go and be peaceful, go and be at one with the nature, one with yourself. All this pain, don't have to worry about all those things. Put it all aside. Uh, that 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 is where we try to whitewash everything out. Yeah. What the Buddha says is to see things as they really are. They they but most people want to see things what they want to see. Not see things as they really are. See things as they really are, that means you have to see and also acknowledge and accept the unpleasant things also, the unpleasant feelings also. Yeah. Nowadays, that's terrible sometimes. But what can I say? I can say what I can say right now, Nene. Yeah? Hmm. This is one thing. This is one thing that a big transformation uh, from a vipassana to an ev to the everyday life can help the uh, the person or the, uh, the the devotee or the monks or the nuns. Hmm. What else is there? Hmm. Completely the opposite of pain. Now that is where pleasant feelings is there. Uh, all the pleasant things. Now in the vipassana also. You know, we are thought that uh, also don't get attached to the pleasant feelings. You got to see it as they really are, not as something as you want it, as you you want it more and more. Uh, because when the when it comes to the pleasant feelings, uh, you you want it to continue, but when it comes to all this pain and and struggling, you want it to have as short as possible. This is because in the, in the back of our mind is where all this desire uh, and also rejection. And it's fluctuate between these two parts. Uh, so, during the, in the times of Vipassana, when we come into things which is pleasant, uh, for example, that you meditate, uh, you meditate, meditate, and then your mind goes into a very peaceful state, you know. All your in-breath, out-breath also disappear. All your rising, falling, everything gone. You know? and, you, and you're like settling into a very peaceful state of mind. And yet, you don't, you don't even know that you like it, you know. But it's the back of your mind is already, you, you love it already. But right in front there, you, know, you just want to rest there. It, while you're noting it, you just want to rest there, be peaceful and so nice. There's no thinking, no sleepiness. There's, the mind doesn't wander off and it's peaceful. And you can sit there and you sit there for an hour or two or three. Then you, you get up as if like, after that you, like, you feel like you're floating on the air. You know, you, when, you walk on, when you're walking also, you feel like you're floating like that. Yeah. When everybody talks to you, it's like you can go through from one ear, come out from another ear. Everything doesn't really register. You know, feel so good. Then after that, in the next meditation, you, you, you want to sit, you want to do, then you keep on looking for that peaceful mental state. You know? Your in-breath, out-breath, you don't want to see. All your meditation object, you don't want anymore. You, know? you just want that peace. Immediately you sit down, you want the peace. Once you get the peace, you feel so good. You know? uh, then, again and again, after sitting, after sitting, you want that peace. What do you think is that? Uh, you think you have improved? Uh? You think that you have improved, yes. <laughs> but you are not going anywhere. You are just in the circle only. Circle. And, and that is where the... the, the um, 
sensual desire is like hold on to you. you know? It's like you are you are trapped in a honey. You, know? you just go swimming around the honey and then ha ha. Yeah. Like the Venus fly trap, you know, like the one in the, you know, you go into the forest and you can see the, the, the fly trap and then they open up. If the insect or the flies drop down, you know, they cannot come out anymore. You know? But in the meantime, before it drops down, it gives you all the sweet nectar around it. You know, so that the flies or the insect will come and uh, stay onto it. And then after that, it will just slide down or drop into the into the liquid inside there. Once it drops into the liquid inside there, all trap ready. Uh, it cannot come out. Something like that, uh, essential de desire. So we really do not know. Uh, so when we meditate, uh, at this at this juncture a lot of these pleasant feelings that comes up a lot of this bliss and a lot of peacefulness and calmness that comes in tranquility that comes in then you are not careful then you get caught into it yeah? you're not supposed to reject those things you know they come in as part of the development of the meditation they are like they are like you know it, it comes in sometimes like you come to to a part that your road is more smoother smooth and, and nice and pleasant but you have to go back to your meditation object your original meditation object if you don't go back to your original meditation object yeah you get caught whether you are in the samatha or in the vipassana the the defilements works the same way yeah it just give you the it give you that honey. It give you that pleasant things. And then if you're not careful, you're not mindful, you already get caught into it. Yeah? Some people not only just this type of uh, calmness, but some people like the lights. The very beautiful lights. They sit down there as if like uh, there's bright colors. Sometimes there's one color pink color, white color, blue color, and sometimes for some people, maybe multiple colors here and there. This is part of the development of meditation. Every yogi will go through it. But the problem is that you get attached to it. Yeah? Yeah. And then when you get attached to it, you're attached for it for long. Yeah. Yeah. So it's supposed to be, you are supposed to drive from KL to Penang. Yeah? You're like KL to Penang. But then, you go into Ipo, you see the Ipo so nice, huh? You forgot about Penang already. You you just you just get caught in Ipo already, and then that's it. You know, you don't have to drive anymore. <laughs> Something like that, huh? So there are many traps along the way, and a lot of these traps in the meditation, and they are pleasant. Now you you can see that this type of pleasantness more often in the samatha meditation. Yeah? More often because you don't that time you don't have to deal with a lot of unpleasant feelings, a lot of more neutral feelings, and sometimes the pleasant feelings, uh, uh, whether mentally or physically. So here, all these type of lights, uh, all these type of pleasant feelings, all these type of bliss and all that thing, uh, your job is not to attach to it. Your job is to be mindful of it. You'll be aware of it. Uh, uh, be aware of it, then after that, you go back to your meditation object. Uh, get aware of it, those things. Uh, as I said, don't push it away. Because some yogis, uh, some meditators thought that, uh, that especially like the Vipassana meditator, they said, they must not see all these pleasant feelings. Huh? Pleasant feeling is wrong. All these pleasant things are all wrong, wrong, wrong. It's not wrong. Attachment is wrong. The feeling is not wrong. The feeling is neutral. They are, they are not defilement. They are neither wholesome nor unwholesome. It's your desire connected towards it and it becomes a defilement. It becomes a problem. Uh, so we have to remove that desire uh, by being mindful of it. The moment you're mindful of it, you're alert of it, then this desire is cut off. Uh, you go back to your meditation object, then it's well and good. Go back to your path. Uh, if not this one, then you go into, into a wrong path. Uh, 
Yeah. So here is where the teachers also is important. Yeah? The teachers help to guide you to go through. And hopefully you get the right teachers. Uh. You get the wrong teachers, then the teachers say, ah, oh, very good. All oh, your pleasant feeling, I do it more. All oh, your bliss, you do it more. See, and then you go and go further and further and further. And until there are some people who came and tell me, you know, they practice for the past 20 years. Uh. Then only they realize that they are stuck there and they are not going anywhere else. 20 years. 20 years. For a, a, you know, a, of meditation and you get stuck into all these pleasant feelings for so long that you don't realize that you are supposed to come out of it. Hmm? Now, these things also, well, you can able to bring it out into your everyday life. Yeah? Once you bring it out to your everyday life, is that now when it comes into something which is pleasant, nice and and beautiful to you, then here is where your mindfulness will start to kick in. Yeah? Your mindfulness will start to kick in. Not only mindfulness starts to kick in, but your, in a way, your reflection also will start to kick in. Yeah? In a sense that, uh, if you are a Vipassana meditator, you will see that these pleasant feelings and so on, uh, it, they are not permanent. After all, they will come, they will disappear also. Uh, so when you bring it out to your everyday life, uh, automatically you should, automatically the mind, when the mindfulness comes in, uh, then that type of reflection of seeing these this, uh, pleasant feelings also, they are also not permanent. It gives you joy. Yes, it gives you joy. Not to say that it doesn't give you joy, but don't attach be not so attached to the joy. Not to say we are zero attachment to the joy, but we have much less attachment to the joy. You know, you know? Uh, Then here, it's also become very helpful. It, it also develops that contentment, you know, it develops the contentment on the things that we have. Yeah. So let's say, you are going through internet and so on, and then advertisement come out. You watch your YouTube video, advertisement come out. You scroll through your YouTube, uh, you, you watch your YouTube or your Facebook, advertisement come out. Sometimes you scroll through the Facebook, advertisement also come out. And they know what you want. You know? <laughs> Sometimes uh, this, this, this internet thing, uh, you, you, you are searching for something you know, in your Google, uh, let's say. Uh, but after that, when you scroll through your Facebook, uh, you, see, you, you can see that some of the advertisement in Facebook knows what you want. Right? <laughs> and then they'll show you a certain a number of things. Yeah. Yeah. Because all these things, they kind of like, oh, they are, they are, your information uh, is being thrown around here and there. And, yeah. When I look at Lazada or Shopee, you know, some things I, I see what to interesting is inside there. Then after that, when I scroll through the Facebook, the Lazada or Shopee advertisements is already there. <laughs> so, things like that. So, if you are not careful, then they show you things that maybe things a bit more better, nicer, you know? And you still have a very perfectly working, perhaps a shoe is still working and so on. Eh? But the advertisements will show something much more nicer. Oh, I sim be tong, eh? be, sim keep on one thing already. Eh? You see it once, and then the advertisement, they are very good. They don't show you once. Eh? Because next time you come back to, that, to the Facebook again, eh? They show you the same advertisement and they show you the same advertisement and they show you and they say, more enough, ah, ah, yeah, kawala, bebe kila, you know? <laughs> you start buying already. Yeah? The mind be tiam, the mind cannot settle because it will keep on wanting and wanting and wanting. Yeah. After that, sometimes you buy already, you regret, ah, yeah, no need to buy, ah, buy so many. I already have already, you buy some more for what? Because the hearts. Because the desire is there, you, know? you cannot be contented. Ah. <laughs>
<laughs> anyway, that is where the vipassana comes in. That is where the controlling of the mind comes in, the taming of the mind. And the taming of the mind comes in with mindfulness, with that contentment. Together with that mindfulness and contentment, it comes in. As if, well, I don't need all these type of things. Huh? Unless, perhaps in the future, if I need it, I perhaps they, they remind you perhaps in the future that is a different story but if you keep on doing if 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 we keep on bombarding you and if you have don't have that strength of the mind to stop your mind from going further then it'd be a problem yeah? Yeah. so to the same thing sometimes like food or like this and that nah? now of course i'm not saying that you should not you should deny everything, you know. I'm not saying that. I'm saying that you you must know how to know your limit. You must know how where to know your limit and how much you need and how much all the 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 rest of the things that you don't need, you put it aside or you KIV it for future. Because some of the things may spoil, some of the things may finish. Yeah. So 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 while you have it. Uh, then you'll be contented with it as best as you can. Yeah? You'll be contented with it. Now, this type of contentment, uh, also it's good because um, <clears throat> it helps you to, in a way, in a way you don't have to keep on going out. If you don't have to keep on spending your money unnecessary because right now, un the, the, our our... Uh, you know, the money can, we do not know when, whether we have the job or not, you know, in the next coming future. Yeah? Uh, anyway, this type of happiness, uh, this type of attachment to all this unwholesome, I mean, a lot of these things unnecessary, then perfectly all right. If some of the things in the in the shops or in the restaurants you cannot able to to eat yeah, because of the lockdown and so on then you have that resiliency you have the mind is that you can able to okay if i don't have that and uh, you know, uh maybe you order from other places it's perfectly well and good you don't have to specifically go there because there are some people one that means you want that already you desire that means you desire that and the mind is not going to let it go but when you are more contented, your mind can more more flexible. You know? If you don't have that, another thing also is okay. Yeah? A less a less perhaps less quality or in in that sense. Uh, perhaps it could be more quality also. It can be cheaper, maybe, perhaps. Yeah? So there are a number of things. Right, for example, right now we can't travel. We may not able to travel because of lockdown and so on, but a lot of people have that desire to travel, to see other friends, to see loved ones. Like for example, like the recent celebration that the people travel interstate, go into all kinds of like uh, you know to avoid the detection from the from the you not know, avoid the roadblocks from the police and they go into all kinds of uh, small little road you know lorong <laughs> tikus all these things uh, then because of the desire to see each other so strong uh, then that one it creates a lot of problem you know all these things are because of that desire uh, so so here when we have that desire is when our desire is less uh, we can still able to to communicate with them we can still able to this one but due to a certain situation perhaps you postpone it to a later times when it's better uh, if you can do that then it's good well and good uh, uh, you may you perhaps you may not able to go to the cinema right now you may not able to wear things that beautiful right now after all you're not going anywhere no uh, so we hold on first all these things uh, you keep our desire in check uh, because some people when the desire is so strong and uh, their mind can go into a lot of restless it uh, can go into a lot of a lot of thinking and they they do other things in order to get attached uh, for them the attachment brings them happiness 
Yeah? So we become more contented with all our things. Yeah? And we are not so enticed with, with all these things. We use whatever it's, can be done. So that's why when we are in a, in a retreat, now you see, yeah? when in a retreat, we don't have all the luxury. Internet also don't have, this also don't have, that also don't have. Then the mind can able to meditate. Uh, the mind can meditate and it can settle down quite peacefully. But if you have so many beautiful things around, uh, the mind cannot meditate. If you have a garden, beautiful garden around in the in the meditation centers, uh, uh, you think the meditator will sit down in the meditating or look going into the garden looking at the flowers or the birds and the trees and so on. Uh, if you have something beautiful next to the to the all these uh, uh, meditation centers, uh, then the yogi is very hard for them to meditate. Uh, so, so when when we are meditating, we don't have all these things. That's why our mind uh, is can able to be very much in check, and the contentment is there. We can live without many things, uh, and still can survive, and yet doesn't go into all kinds of mental problems and so on. Uh, uh, so this is one thing. Yeah. Now, this is another thing. Yeah. Now the next thing I want to say yeah, <clears throat> that in the vipassana also, hmm, during the vipassana there can be at times a uh, very dry and barren. You know, like you are going through a desert like that. Now. <laughs> Nothing much. Uh. You meditate here, meditate there, you know, sien on the. Very, very difficult times. This is part of the whole challenge of the whole development of med meditation. And it's part of the development for most people. Uh, at certain times, the mind gets very barren, very uneasy. Yeah. So during this barren run, uh, sometimes the, the heart gets very dejected that uh, you am I progressing? Am I going further? How is it like every time you're uh, looking at the same thing uh, so long and so on? Uh, it, it feels like a barren run. And then for some yogis, the mind is down a bit, you know, no hard to practice and so on. Uh, this is where at times we need to have a change in the meditation. We change it with uh, like going into like another form of meditation, like going into metta or going into other form of meditation. Hmm. Then when the metta sometimes and you're able to develop the metta, the mind gets, you know, gets alert again, gets a, a, a boost again, you know, it gets that joy again, it, it, it comes in. Uh, and then after that, with that joy, you transfer it back to vipassana, and when you transfer it back to vipassana, and you push the vipassana, and then it goes, it goes further, and then that dryness, and then it kind of like goes on, it slowly disappear, and then you feel that the whole progress is coming through. And so, again, time after time, you know, the yogis, some yogis have to go through these things because of that, the mind goes into nothing much. You know? So here, what we do is that we inject ourselves with joy. Yeah. We inject ourselves with joy to push us to go us to make us go further. You know, uh, a, a booster, uh, and then that also with that, this understanding, uh, you can able to bring it out to the med to the everyday life. And therefore, not only just inject yourself with a vaccine, but this time is inject yourself with a wholesome joy. You know, inject yourself with a wholesome joy because right now things are like every day, you morning, you wake up, you see your partner, you see your family, you go through the whole day, the same thing. Night. And tomorrow again, the same thing, and the same thing, and the same thing, and the same thing, and the same thing. Things become like so barren. Sien already, you know? uh, that is where you need to inject yourself with a bit of joy. Uh, the first thing, of course, you make sure that you you, you registered for inject your vaccine first. Uh, uh. That one is hopefully those who have not done yet, not not registered yet. You know, you better do something about it. You know? 
but the thing is that here, while we're in, in the talking about this type of subject, that we need to inject ourselves with tremendous amount of joy, or even sometimes a little bit also, it makes you go further a little bit. It go go. It makes your day better. It makes your. You can able to lift up your mood already. Yeah. yeah. Now. While we are going through the troubled times, are sometimes that uh, you know, if if although you may have the resilience, uh, but sometimes that resilience is difficult for us. That the situation is difficult for us to bear. Every now and then, uh, it's good that we pump in a little bit of of joy into it in order for the mind uh, to get out from that state of mind. Uh, in order to lift up the mood, to lift up the emotion. Uh, so what we do here, mm, here is that we, we bring ourselves a bit of joy and then the number of things that we can do in our everyday life. Uh, now one of it is that uh, before we have that joy, uh, we make sure that we must have a good body, at least a healthy body. This time, uh, as you no, know, when 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 this time you cannot able to go out, but if you can, if there, if any possibility you can, to go out just around your neighborhood to walk or to go a bit of jogging or whether it's indoor, do some exercise. Uh, don't just sit there and just watch TV and play video games and so on. You know, but do some exercise. Do an ex do some exercise that can able to make you sweat sweat and if you can makes you pen a little bit panting a little bit you know it takes you maybe like one one hour one and a half hours with that type of exercise then with that body is feel good now usually the mood is already lifted before you inject more joy into it you know so that that body has need to a little bit of stretch out and exercise in order of for the for the body to feel good and this time especially i i think that a lot of people need that you know but then a lot of people don't want to do that they just sit there sometimes we'll keep keep on working at home keep on keep on cooking keep on doing this thing do some exercise on your own yeah uh, that one is important right now yeah. Every now and then, also I have to go out for for walks or so, you know, because nearby the back of the peace house here is already a mountains already, and it's good. Uh, sometimes I, have to, I go up there to have a good uh, walk alone, yeah, alone. <laughs> Nobody goes with me, which is good. And the next thing is that what y'all can do is that instead of doing vipassana and doing anapana and so on, uh, this time is to 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 inject yourself with wholesome joy and the wholesome joy usually comes with the four a uh, three brahma viharas not the equanimity part you know? the three brahma viharas the com the metta karuna and mudita uh, and especially metta and Kar mudita uh, and and the better one for right now is actually mudita uh, a mudita here is this appreciative joy now, a lot of times you don't practice these things, uh, but this is one of the four guardian, uh, sorry, one of the four Brahma Viharas, uh, divine abiding, how you uh, can keep your mind in a certain mental state abiding. Uh, and this time is a wholesome mental joy. Mm. Now, when you want to do this meditation, uh, uh, it's a simple, not so difficult uh, meditation to start it off. You know, you want to sit down there. Now, you be aware of yourself. Bring them some mindfulness into you. Uh, bring some mindfulness into you just for 10 minutes or 15 minutes or so. Uh, and just keep your mind in the present. Uh, then when, so once the, the mindfulness comes in, uh, and then you, you begin to reflect. Uh, uh, you reflect all the goodness that I've done. Yeah. May all this goodness give me well-being. 
And all the goodness that I've done, perhaps the goodness may be coming from like dana or offerings or doing some service or doing some generosity of the past, you know, or doing some meditation or sila or you have helped somebody, you know, this type of things you know, that you recall it back. You recall them back, you know, generally as a theme, you recall them back as a theme and then you put it into yourself that all, may all these wholesome uh, deeds that I've done, may they give me happiness. May they bring about joy in myself. It's a recalling of our, our, all our good deeds here. And then it brings out that joy. Uh, uh, may all the May all these merits that I've done in the past, uh, be, may all this goodness do not disappear. Uh, may all this do not fade away. May all this able to increase for my happiness and for my support for the further development of the Dhamma. Because you need that, those things to support you. And you need those things to support you, to give you some kind of happiness in the present, therefore you can have a better development in the future. Uh, murita. Or after that, you may you 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 extend it to the people around you. Uh, may all their merits that they have accumulated in the past, may all their uh, may all their merits do not disappear. May all their merits do not diminish, do not fade away. May all their dimini, uh, may all their merits, may all their goodness and all their wholesome deeds they have done able to support them for their future, for their endeavor, for their progress in their worldly life and also in their spiritual life. Yeah. So you go through these things and then you go through more and the people around you, people around you and are the or the further to the neighborhood, all these people and to all the beings also, to the animals, to the to the this one, and then to, to the people in the country or the state or the country, and then you go further into the world, into the whole uh, world, and then to go to the whole universe and to go to all the beings in all the 31 planes of existence. So when you do that, you spread them, you do it again and again. You know? May all beings, may all things, may all their merits give them happiness. May all their good deeds give them joy. May all their give them, may they all, all of them be happy, truly be happy. So you 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 have that sincere joy for yourself and for all beings. Then here you are directly inject joy into your heart. Uh, and it makes your mind uplifted. Uh, and you do it for a while, you know. You do it for a while. Every, every time, sometimes your mind runs away, just pull it back to where you stop. And then you just keep on continue and continue. And it's wonderful. It just leaves you out from all kinds of from from all kinds of the daily mundane chores and mundane, you know. Uh, life, you know, that you are going through right now. Uh, sometimes, uh, deep, so for some people, it's depressive. And then here is that you have some joy is injected into your life. And it's wonderful. Uh, so, this, these things is one of the things that I find it is, can be very helpful into your everyday life. Now, if you cannot able to do Morita, then you can able to do Metta. Yeah, I think Brother Victor also every Wednesday, and then they, oh, I think so. They have a uh, this meta classes. You, know, you can join them, and then then develop the meta, and that meta also you have to do, it. and also is bring about joy. Now the thing is that when you do this Brahma Viharas, whether Murita Karuna or meta, you must do it with sincerity. You must really mean what you say. You know or mean, mean what you think. Like if you mean yourself, may you, may I, may I, uh, may all the merits that I have, may, may it give rise to happiness. So you got to really mean it. Uh, 
You got to mint it. Uh, may all beings around here, uh, whatever merits they have accumulated in the present, may they be happy. You must truly mint it. Uh, if you don't mean it, if you just put the lines go through again and again, just repetition, then there's no there's no joy inside there. No, there's no happiness inside there. Uh, so this one is very helpful in the times of trouble. Once in a while, you've got to do these things in order to uplift your mood. Yeah? And this is a wholesome joy. Instead of we looking for for the joy that comes from eating, the chai comes from uh, our, our uh, uh, anticipating, desiring, a sensual type of desire. Yeah? Uh, although that one, you need some of it, but it would be better, it would be better if you have that type of wholesome type of joy. Yeah? Yeah. So, if you can, other forms of meditation also that you keep up also in the everyday life. Yeah? You keep up, you spend a little bit of time in order to keep your mind in this in this way so when you do these things uh, very quickly very quickly you you feel that uh, you can go through every day much more better not not so like depressive sian and all that you know like no 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 energy to do this don't feel like doing that and so on which many people have that type of feelings when they are at home for a long period of time you know? So you need to have that joy to come in. You need to have that bodily to be a bit stronger than right now so that you can do, your mind can much more, feel much more better, much more clearer in your thinking. Yeah? Yeah. Now, another thing that what we can do is that to also, you know, um, not only we recall back all our dana that we have done, you know, the sila that we have done and so forth. Here also at times also, uh, we make an effort to do some, for example, a donation or, or service in whichever way that you can, you know, without going out from the house, you know. Some people do donation, still do some donation to the temple. They give these things. Uh, if sometimes they may need of a service, sometimes perhaps you know you may have cooked in your house and then you deliver it to somewhere, you know, you, you give it to somewhere or you make certain things to offer it to somebody else, you know, do something that give rise to a wholesome type of joy. Yeah. Uh, this type of things uh, it makes it makes like it makes you feel much more better. Sometimes perhaps that you may be good at cooking and baking, you know. Then perhaps that you want to like share it with other people, uh, maybe share it with your neighbors, for example, you know, <laughs> without going through near them, of course, you know. Uh, you find it a way that you want to share these things to them, or you want to do something and then you want to send it over to your to your um to your relatives or friends, you know, just to make them happy. <laughs> And it also it makes you happy because it kind of like a, a service or kind of like a dana, an offering to them. So when you do these things once in a while, it uplifts your heart. So there are many things that we can able to do. There are many things, as I said, we can have more and a lot of things that we can, we can talk about. So here towards this Dhamma talk, now, in the beginning, I've, I've mentioned about you have to have that resiliency, you know, that it comes from the training of, from pain, uh, that you can able to withstand better in your everyday life. And then also the same thing, as I said, that not only just the unpleasant feelings, but during the meditation, we have to, we have to be careful with the pleasant feeling. We have to be mindful of the pleasant feelings too. Things that which is nice and pleasant, that the mindfulness is that we don't get attached to it. And so too, when we come into the, our every, everyday life, that attachment, that strong attachment has a handbrake. Yeah, there's a stop. There is a contentment there that we don't overdo all our central desire, you know, over, you know, over attached to things. Yeah. So not only that, when it comes into this vipassana also that at times uh, that things get 
barren, it gets dry, and then we also change into developing some, some kind of joy in the meditation. Uh, so too, also the same thing when we do it in the everyday life also, we can bring that joy and we can develop and we can arouse that type of wholesome joy in our life. Then it makes our mind so much better. Whether in the COVID times or in the future when you are going through certain prolonged trouble uh, difficult times okay so we stop here for 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 today right